When I was 18, I thought without a doubt I would be a wife by 26 and a mother shortly after. In South Jersey, where I grew up, this was standard procedure. But here I am, 29, living in San Diego, and I'm still 0 for 2. My 20s have brought with them a share of emotional breakdowns, a lot of apartments, and a deep understanding of how important selfies are to many people. <laughs> with the busy lifestyle that I have, it's hard for me to even imagine having children at this point. Not because I don't like kids, because I do, but I feel like I already have a kid, only it more closely resembles a scavenger whose ancestors lived in the woods and hunted moving objects. I call her Nola, warrior princess. <laughs> but that's not on her birth certificate. It just says Nola. She was about 12 weeks old when I got her, and she has since dictated my life for the last six years. <laughs> she decides which people are allowed to enter our home, who I'm allowed to touch, and how much space I'm permitted to have in a bed. <laughs> she's beautiful, she's a beast, and she's my miniature Australian Shepherd. <laughs> in retrospect, I think I may have had baby fever when I got her, because I had a tendency of dressing her up in doggy dresses, <laughs> and frequently used her minor needs as an excuse to get out of social events. Apparently, it was also important to me that Nola received a noteworthy education, though this decision may have been influenced by her compulsion to sprint laps around the house and chew up really important things, like my birth certificate, <laughs> my passport, <laughs> and four to five of my college students' term papers. <laughs> in any event, I enrolled her in the finest academy in town, PetSmart, and the day was approaching that I had dreamt about for years, bringing my daughter to school for her first day. Only school started on a Saturday, and she was a dog. <laughs> During that time in my early 20s, I would occasionally smoke weed before going to bed, and so I partook in a little nightcap. I remember cashing in pretty early because I wanted to get a good night's sleep before Nola's big day. The following morning began like any other, really. I slid out of my sheets and went to the bathroom to brush my teeth. I noticed Nola hadn't followed me and posted herself up at the door. That was weird. I called her name, and she didn't come. I went back to my bedroom and pulled the bed skirt up to find her lying on the floor with her eyes half open and her limbs reaching out in front of her. My mind was immediately immersed in panic. I brought her downstairs to the living room and laid her on the carpet. I think I even started crying as I considered what could have happened to her or what enemies she had. <laughs> I searched the walls around me for answers when very suddenly, my eyes made their way to the little canister lying face down on the floor. As the realization set in that Nola had in fact eaten the marijuana I stored in that canister, <laughs> Nola melted into the carpet. <laughs> There was no time to waste. I instantly consulted the most knowledgeable veterinarian known to man, Google. <laughs> My dog ate weed. I rapidly typed the wise technology. <laughs> the first link I clicked read, what will happen if my dog ate weed? The first response read, your dog is going to be stoned. <laughs> that was comforting. <laughs> Fortunately, Nola had only eaten a very minuscule amount of the weed and was not showing any alarming side effects other than being really sleepy, so I decided taking her to the vet was unnecessary. Not to mention, I could probably tell Nola's vet that her head fell off and he would suggest giving her a teaspoon of Benadryl. <laughs> the rest of the links suggested giving your dog some extra treats, making sure they had lots of water, and not expecting them to move too much that day. <laughs> that wasn't really an option, though as Nola was scheduled for her first day of school. <laughs> and like any reasonable mother, I did what my mom did to me the first time I got drunk in my adolescence. I told Nola it had been her poor decision to eat the weed, <laughs> and she was still going to school. <laughs> After feeding her an extra hearty breakfast that morning, I strapped her into her harness and slowly walked her to my car. She curled up into a ball at the floor of the front seat and fell back to sleep. I was so embarrassed taking her to school like that. 
But the classes weren't cheap, and they were non-refundable. <laughs> Once we got to PetSmart, it took what seemed like a few hours to reach the front doors, with Nola walking like a beached whale. <laughs> I sought out the enclosed area, used for dog training classes, and introduced myself and my stone dog. <laughs> Nola neatly sat down as her eyes drifted around the building in a daze. What a well-behaved dog you have! <laughs> The trainer said to me while I scanned the puppies running around chewing on each other's ears. I nodded my head and smiled, <laughs> recognizing the dramatic irony of the assumption. The class began with the trainer directing, directing us to walk forward, holding our dog's leashes. Normally, Nola would sit limp because she didn't want to be walked with a leash. This time, she sat limp because she was stoned. <laughs> As we fell behind the rest of the class, my pleading for her to walk quickly transitioned to me feeding her more treats and pushing her forward from behind. A couple people commented what a good and calm dog she was, while she inconspicuously defecated on the pet smart floor. <laughs> the class was halfway around the store when I desperately asked a cashier for dog bags. As I cleaned up what was essentially the equivalent to a seven-year-old pooping their pants, I contemplated what this introduction to school meant for Noel's future and what it meant for me as a parent. She wasn't in immediate danger, but I only had her for a year at that point. In fact, this was nothing compared to the trauma she would later experience that summer after I accidentally T-boned a car with her sitting in the front seat. Six years later, she still refuses to sit in the front seat. The whole situation was mortifying. I was ashamed of myself for being such a negligent parent and frustrated at her for possessing 300 million olfactory receptors in her nose that guided her to the weed in the first place. <laughs> After 60 minutes of forcing a smile and convincing the trainer and other puppy parents that Nola was just really tired and not usually that well behaved, the first day of class finally ended. I can confidently say Nola did not show up high for the following classes, <laughs> and as intended, she earned a diploma that hung by a magnet on the refrigerator door claiming her competently, behaviorally trained. My friends would later tell me I should have demanded a refund. So sure, I've made my mistakes over the years. I was a single mom for most of it though, and no one tells you how hard it's going to be raising a dog on your own. <laughs> okay, maybe they do. But who hears that over the sound of a tiny puppy whimpering to play with you? I know I didn't. Even after the many great shoes I've lost and the pillows that never stood a chance, I still love that damn dog more every single day. She's given me insight into the height of my patience, showed me what true, unconditional love feels like, and inadvertently supported me in some of the roughest moments of my life. She is a companion and a guardian, and she takes up a large percentage of my heart. But about having kids, I don't know. Only time will tell if my biological alarm clock is to eventually go off sometime during my 30s. I do know one thing for sure, though. Nola will always maintain the title of being my only child that got stoned their first day of school. 